In this video we're just going to have a quick look and see whether it's time to just give up on the FTSE 100 and look for something else to invest into. Anything's potentially got to be better than what we've seen over the past 40 years after it celebrated its birthday on the 3rd of January 2024. Welcome back to the channel and if you're new here, hi, I'm Mark of Desperately Seeking Fi. In this video we're going to have a quick run through what performances look like, some of the details around dividends, the price of earnings for the FTSE 100 and have a look and see what has really happened and is it time to really start looking for something else to invest into. So we have a quick look at this chart of the index since its inception back in 1984. We can see actually it's been pretty lackluster. It's only up about 600% over those 40 years. So not particularly brilliant growth, but it's even worse if we look at how it's done from the millennium to current day it's gone from about 600 from about 6900 up to well it peaked out at 8047 and a little bit extra on a intraday trading on the 16th of february last year that really hasn't been particularly outstanding when we look at a 10 percent growth over the past 24 years I'd be hoping for a little bit more than that. Market cap is sat somewhere in around the 1.937 trillion. That sounds like a huge amount of money. It is a huge amount of money, but when we have a look at it against some of the big US tech stocks, Apple and Microsoft smashed that figure of the whole FTSE 100 completely out of the water in either one of those two companies and actually Alphabet isn't that far behind either. So I suppose let's do a little bit of history and before the FTSE even existed there was the FT30. Very similar to the Dow Jones Industrial Average Index. It was equal weightings across all 30 of those stocks and it was and basically if one stock performed badly you ended up pulling down the whole index. So let's have a quick look at sort of how the FTSE 100 is made up. Everybody talks about it being really slow and lethargic Obviously, these companies based out of the UK make the majority of their money across the world. I think it's somewhere in around that 80% mark. And you've got big companies in that mining, healthcare and financial sectors. If we have a quick look at sort of what the returns have been like for that sector, and this is the problem, you will get some parts of the market doing really well whereas others are really pulling you down. So the healthcare side of things really driven by COVID-19 and AstraZeneca in there. And then looking at telecoms really pulling it down and you're looking at your Vodafones in this instance. But let's have a look at where valuation is and sort of having a look at what the price earnings are for some of those different sectors and then looking at what that forecast growth might actually be and what might drive some change in the UK market. And their analysts are reasonably optimistic that some parts of the economy may be worth investing into whereas others are don't touch it with a big barge bill. Tech side of things is so the whole GB market looking at just over that 11 times PE still very cheap compared to things like the S&P 500 pushing up towards the, the 20 mark but tech is the one that is out, a serious outlier with that 77 times uh, price to earnings and then you're looking at real estate has had a particularly bad time over the the last while but looking at having a uh, major growth coming in so potentially some of the the rates may be worth investing into said there's probably some names on here that you will know and you probably know nearly every single one of them from your shells through your hsbc's uh BP, Rio Tinto, obviously leading the way on the mining side of things. And from my last portfolio update, you'll see that Rio Tinto was one of the, the miners actually bucking the trend and showing that, that it was up in my portfolio. 
So of the original 100, how many are still on the FTSE 100? And some of them will have moved in, some will have moved out over time. But on this list, and I've taken this from, uh, I think it was Pro Investors, I'll drop a link down below uh, to their article that they talk about this. But you are looking at some big household names in there. And there's 25 on this list. Uh, people argue about how many have actually are still on the FTSE 100 from that original listing back on the 3rd of January 84. Um, some have moved in, some have moved out, some have merged and amalgamated. So it could be anywhere from 24 up to about 34, um, but they talk about that in this article. If we have a quick look at this graph, you can see over that first couple of decades of the FTSE, it did really well. It got up and started flirting with that 7,000 mark. And in the 80s, we were looking at almost a 20% increase. And then in the 90s, about 15% increase in the value. That said, over the last couple of decades, about a 10% increase, really lackluster. And the whole FTSE has changed quite a bit. Um, over that period because of it being so slow in growth terms lots of the companies started to incentivize their stakeholders by paying reasonably good dividends and if you're paying the dividend you don't have the money to reinvest back into the company to drive that growth in the stock price. On this chart, you can see that there has been quite a bit of fluctuation in the dividend yield for the FTSE 100 index. On average, across an annual figure, it's somewhere between two and four and a half percent, but actually we see it averaging out over the whole period of the FTSE 100 at about 4.5%. Um, but this table just shows you where we are and currently we are sat at about 3.81% yield. I am a dividend investor and I like to see those dividends coming in. They encourage me to keep on this journey towards financial independence, but it really does show when you look at what adding that dividend growth into the growth of the index, it has lagged behind the European and the US markets over the same period where they've been seeing growth of somewhere between 5.7% and 8.1%. And obviously remember we have a couple of pretty major black swan events over the last couple of decades. So we've got dot com bubble, we've got the financial crisis of 2008. Some issues in around 2018, COVID, and then more recently, the, the sort of wars that have broken out across the world. If you're finding some value in this video, I would love it if you could think of liking and subscribing and drop a comment down below. Where do you think the FTSE 100 is going to go to? Are you going to be investing into it through something like the UK Vanguard? FTSE 100 ETF or is it time to go and seek fortunes from somewhere else? And I suppose how have UK companies all changed? If we look back over time, um, the number of companies on the London Stock Exchange has drastically reduced. It sat just in around the just under the 2000 companies registered at the moment, but that's down from uh, 2008 at about 3250 companies being registered. How does the UK get represented in market cap? What's the UK share in the um, in the MSCI's world index? Back in 2000, it was sat at about 11%. It is plummeted, as you can see on this pie chart, to 3.96%. Several reasons behind this. Obviously, the number of companies, stagnant growth over time, being driven by things like companies having to use the dividend payments, Brexit has also had an issue. We're looking at lower investment from pension funds into UK companies. We're looking at less 
inward investment from international companies it all comes together to see things being drawn down in the value of of the uk stock market is it time to just throw the baby out with the bath water look at sort of building up the number of tech companies that we have i think there were about 2.1 percent of companies on the FTSE 100 registered as techie kind of companies so do we really think it's time to start thinking about stepping away from buying etfs that track some of the, the UK indices. If we have a quick look at this chart, you've got the S&P 500 massively outperforming the FTSE 100 over the last 15 years, so basically from the 2008 crash. And what do we see that starts to drive that forward? We see the tech industry taking off. So with the way that the FTSE 100 is built and the types of companies that we have in there, is it time to look at how do we get tech stocks into the FTSE 100? At the moment, you've seen that analysts are looking at the FTSE 100 and looking at the UK market. Everything seems to be really cheap at the moment. So is there an opportunity to see a bit more growth taking place in the next few years or should we all just decide let's go and get all of those companies that are paying 10 plus percent dividend yields and just invest into them or is that really going to be a massive dividend trap i'm starting to get worried about companies like vodafone um can they really sustain that 11 percent dividend yield that they're currently running at i'm not sure they can but there is potential in the UK market and UK stocks to go and do a little bit of well thought through investing into dividend growth stocks. Why don't you go and have a look at a couple of these videos on this playlist where I look at some stocks that do provide dividend growth potential. Thanks very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye.